12. And uh, we'll try to, I don't know how many places we're going to turn, but uh, we'll turn where, when the Lord says to turn. But uh, got a uh, course song. I played a little bit of it on the piano this morning, but uh, not that one, but the uh, one at home. And uh, anyway, we ain't going to bother with that. Uh, but it's, uh, the song uh, starts out like this. As a child, I foolishly turned God away, not knowing the heartache a sinner must face. But God in his goodness let me return to share with his children this lesson I learned. Sin will take you, far, take you farther than you want to go. Slowly but wholly taking control. Sin will leave you longer than you want to stay. Sin will cost you far more than you want to pay. So with pleasure and promises, sin took control, leaving me dying with nothing to show. Gone were my loved ones and my dearest friends. Only a Savior could love me again. And, of course, of course, sin will take you farther. So Romans 5, verse 12, it says this, Wherefore, as by one man centered, sin entered into the world, And death by sin. And so death passed upon all men for that all have sinned. Let's uh, bow our heads for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, uh, I thank you for your many, many blessings. Thank you for providing us the solution to our sin problem. We can't... Uh, Go get one of them self-help books. Go to some uh, meeting somewhere and uh, that take care of it. We've got to come to you. We've got to acknowledge that we are a sinner and that only you can save. No, no, no self-help book, no pill somewhere can take care of it. Only the blood that you shed on the cross of Calvary can take care of it. And Lord, today, if there's any understanding of my voice that has not accepted you as their personal Lord and Savior, I ask that you, as you knock on their heart's door, give them the faith, Lord, to answer that knock. And Lord, uh, us, your children, may we not take the grace, the mercy that you so freely you're, you've got a river overflowing with grace and mercy. May we not take that for granted and realize this, that we need to live a holy, acceptable life unto you. Lord, uh, have your way in each one of our lives today. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Today, This day and time, we, uh, you know, I got some advice several years ago. Uh, Brother Marty, you don't need to preach on sin anymore. Well... Uh, Y'all have hung out with me for 10 years, some of you for 55 years, some of you for almost 32 years, or married for 32 years, uh, almost. Uh, later on this month, uh, y'all realize this, uh, I didn't take that advice, and will not take that advice. But here's some, here's some words that, uh, well, politically... It sounds better if you just say error, mistake, a misjudgment. I had a period of weakness. Here you go. We get out of dictionary and, well, I just had a psychological misadjustment. Anything under the sun, but calling it what it is, sin. Now, my piano teacher, when I'd hit the wrong note, she was a little little lady, and uh, I can't say it like she said it, so I ain't even going to try. But when I'd hit the wrong note, and it was frequent, in a high-pitched voice, she would say, oopsie. So... That might be another word we might hear 
for sin. But, uh, you know, uh, somebody that's uh, a drunkard, that don't sound good. Let's call them an alcoholic. A thief? Oh, no, let's not call them a thief. Let's call them an embezzler. That, uh, that makes people go to the dictionary, and some people won't go to the dictionary and won't even know what's going on. And some people, oh, it's, it's just how they was raised. It's the family they came from. If they would have been in a different family, different atmosphere, they'd be different. Now, let me tell you, all is sin. And come short. No matter what family we're from, we there, there's no family that we can be born to in this world where we'd be sinless. Nobody. Billy Graham's children had to be saved. Jerry Falwell's children had to be saved. Adrian Rogers' children had to be saved. And we could go on and on and on. Billy Sunday's children had to be saved. I don't know if Billy Sunday had children, but if he had children, they had to be saved. We go to doctors, and hopefully nobody here has had this happen to them, but I've heard stories about folks being misdiagnosed. They hear your symptoms. They look at you, all the tests, and they say, well, this is what you got. They give you some medicine, and a misdiagnosis has take pl took, taken place. Just this week, uh, I learned of this 18-year-old that when she was nine years old, she was given the incorrect medicine, and it completely changed her life. In other words, her personality was such and such before this medicine, and then they, well, she's got this. Let's give her this. It's the wrong medicine. She just wasn't the same little girl anymore. And it's a, I don't know how she is now, but uh, I'm, I'm guessing it was a pretty recent video I was watching. 18 years old. 18 years old now. And they found it. But how long did it take them to find? And then let's think about life. How many times do we blame this or that or the other when the real problem's sin? Oh, they just can't help their Well, uh, if they can't help their self, I know one who can. So several things we want to look at this morning. First of all, let's look at a definition of sin, the meaning of sin, and uh, look back to Romans 5 and verse 12. It says, Wherefore, as by man one wherefore, as by one man sin entered. And that word translated sin there has this meaning. Missing the mark. There, in other words, there's a target out there, and we shoot at it. And we miss. Now, my granddad and I were walking around the edge of the field one day. I reckon we was looking to see how the soybeans was doing and all that. And uh, I reckon that snake was thinking that he'd go out and see how everything was growing as well. Because there he was. And uh, I never knew granddad doing this very much. But he gave me that advice that I've shared with y'all before. Granddaddy demonstrated a whole lot of things for me. I learned a great deal of things watching him do this, that, and the other. Uh, some of which I still use today when I get in a situation to, to use it. But what he told me that day, he never did demonstrate. I've never hunted YouTube for a video on this because I don't want to do it. So... We was walking around looking at the soybeans, seeing how everything was going, and there's the snake. And he said, Marty, grab him by the tail and pop his head off. He 
And he reached in his pocket. I never, hardly ever knew him doing this. He pulls out a pistol. So I got his pistol. First several, you know, six, a six shooter. I missed the first several times. But I finally got him. Missing the mark. Several years ago, uh, had to be prior to 2002. I'm thinking 2001. Amy can correct me uh, if I'm wrong. We went up to Virginia around Halloween and uh, visited with a lady that I graduated high school with that had set us up on the blind date back in 1987. And uh, she was up there working just right outside Washington, D.C. And we went up and stayed about a week with her. And uh, Halloween happened while we was there, so Anna had her Halloween costume. We took that with us, and uh, we went over into Washington, D.C., toured a lot of things. I don't know, Anna was of, of the age. I don't know if she remembers any of that uh, Washington, D.C. stuff. But uh, sometime later, she worked up there for about a year, moved back, working in Huntsville. And I asked her one day, I said, uh, do you ever see any of those folks you work with up there? And she said, yeah. That, that, matter of fact, that lady that we went to church with that day when y'all was up there, she's coming down. I'm going to show her all the sights around here. I said, uh, Penny, uh, what are you going to show her around here? What is around here that's going to be worthwhile for this lady that lives up there around Washington, D.C.? What do we have here that's going to amaze her because she lives up there. What, what, are we gonna, what do we got? She said, well, Marty, one of the things I'm going to talk to her to is where you're down. And I was like, why? And she said, where else can you find a bridge, a dam that's a mile wide, or long? And I was thinking, no, that ain't. It is. So let's take, if we was to take a field trip today down to Wheeler Dam, and we're going to have a contest. See who could jump across the river. You said, well, that's silly. Let's say we did. Terry jumps 10 feet. He just takes a run and go and just jumps 10 feet. Justin, he takes a run and go and jumps nine and a half feet. Derek, being Derek, jumps nine feet. Because bad ankles, right? Yep. Me, I jump five feet. Who passed the test? None of us. What was we supposed to do? We were supposed to jump across the river. You said, well, that's impossible. Well, let's look at it this way. Would Justin be bragging because he jumped further than I did and Derek did? Would Terry be boasting, hey, I jumped further than you and Derek. Hey, look at me. You still miss the mark. Romans 3.23 says, matter of fact, all have sinned and have missed the mark. All our goal may be heaven. How are we going to get there? We can't get there ourselves. We can jump, run, try to jump as high as we can. We ain't going to make it unless Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. Adrian Rogers says this, A church is but a society of sinners who finally realized it. Told you last week about a puzzle. And like me, after I showed them that puzzle that they can't do, I can't do, nobody can do, time goes by, and like me, they still been trying. I tried. Even after she told us this is impossible, I tried. 
Kids today still do the same thing. They come up to me and they said, hey, you know that puzzle you said was impossible? I figured it out. And my reply, I'm a pretty good bubble buster sometimes. No, you ain't. It's impossible. How are we going to jump across the Tennessee River? You say, we can't. And I say this, I'll descend. Come short of the glory of God. 1 John 3, verse number 4. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. In James chapter 2, and verse number 10, speaking of bubble busting, I, I, can, I can make it uh, 10 years without lying. Well, I'm fixing to bust your bubble. I've never killed anybody. I'm fixing to bust your bubble. I've never committed adultery. I'm fixing to bust your bubble. I've never taken God's name in vain. I'm fixing to bust your bubble. Jane. 2, verse 10. For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. One Sunday evening, we were on our way to, I was filling in for a preacher. I, I'm, think, I'm guessing that the preacher was sick. Looking back, I can't remember. And the reason I'm thinking that he was sick was his wife was there, his children were there, and of course his children at the time was adults, but they they were they were there and uh, made it there fine Sunday morning, and then uh, going back Sunday night, I topped the hill, and uh, as my daddy puts it, a blue I had a blue light special waiting on me. He pulled me over on the way to church. Didn't ask too many questions, but wrote me a ticket. I can't remember how much it was. It was uh, pretty pretty expensive. And I, I, I got to church, got to tell them, tell them about that, and the preacher's wife just got, I mean, fighting my hat. And she dug in her purse, and she gave me some money to help. She didn't give me the whole amount, but to help pay for that ticket. When that policeman walked up to my door, And told me I was speeding. Why couldn't I have told him about all the laws I hadn't broken? Well, I didn't run a stop sign. I didn't run a red light. I didn't pass anybody on double line. I got shoes on my feet because, you know, after you're not supposed to drive barefoot in the state of Alabama. Would that have done any good? No, I was speeding. He caught me, gave me a ticket. With no talking. Well, look at all the what, what, good I've done. James 4 and 17 says, Therefore to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Missing the target. Let's say that uh, they rig up a, a way for us to go across the Tennessee River without being on the bridge at Wheeler Dam. And let's say that they give us, every one of us, a log chain to hold on to. You say, well, I don't know if I can hold on to it for a mile. Well, let's say somehow or another, they rig up a seat for us to sit in at the bottom of that log chain. And that chain's got 10 links. How many of them links has to break for us to fall in the river? Does all 10 of them have to break? 
Does five of them need to break? Four? Three? Two? Now, if one of them links breaks, down we're going to go. All has sinned and come short of the glory of God. So we're looking at what is the definition of sin. We done said missing the mark, and we've pointed out some scripture. And here's one we might not think about. Romans 14, verse 23. Romans 14, verse 23. Paul writes to the church at Rome, writes to us. He says, under inspiration of the Holy Spirit, of course, and he that doubteth is damned if he eat because he eateth not of faith, for whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Now, uh, I got to looking yesterday. We were out in the battle on Saturday morning eating breakfast, of course. Got to eat breakfast, so they say. So anyway, we was out about eating breakfast. While I was there, I looked, and I said, hey, we can go by such such store and get some stuff free. And I was so proud of myself. Usually it's Amy that gets stuff free. And so she got her free stuff, and I got my free stuff, and she went to one store, I went to the other. And I want you to know that when I went in that other store, I found me a, I mean, a shirt, I didn't don't have one that color. It's exactly, I thought, what I needed. And I got to, I took a picture of it, sent it to Amy. Matter of fact, I came back, I said, well, I got, let me look at that shirt one more time. And I, and I realized this, that when I first picked up that shirt, it was hung up like Marty Mosley had hung it up, and I don't work there. So I told myself, as my daddy used to say, self, a lot of people has looked at that shirt. Reckon why it's still here. And I held it up and turned it around. And there was a spot on the back of that thing about that yay big. Oh, that's why. So I text Amy back, never mind. It's got a big old spot on the back of it. Let's say this morning that I got dressed and Amy was downstairs. Hey, Amy, is it all right if I wear that shirt I wore yesterday to church this morning? And she says, no, it's dirty. So I change shirts. And I go down there, you know, she's talented now. When she and I first started dating, when I was growing up, everybody had to be quiet when something was on TV. And I went down to their house and was watching something on TV, trying to watch something on TV. And Judy and Melissa was over here arguing. Naomi was over here beside me. And she was arguing a little bit with them and back and forth, back and forth. And then they look at me about 30 minutes into it and said, Marty, what's happened? On the TV? I, I have no earthly idea. And Amy told them everything that has happened. So let's say that I got dressed, had to change shirts because she said it was dirty. And I go down there and I said, without looking, how did you know that shirt was dirty? Because you had to ask. Lord, is this wrong for me to do this? Probably so if you have to ask. Is it wrong for me to say? Probably if you have to ask. Yeah, it, it probably wouldn't be a good idea. But if we do whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Let's look at some more things. How did sin enter? Well, you say, what's well, in the Garden of Eden? What happened when sin entered? 
Because it said uh, there in Romans 5, verse 12, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, what happened? Turn with me to Isaiah chapter number 14. And as you turn in there, I'm, let's remind one another this. Uh, God was leading the way, fire by night, cloud by day, leading the way. And the Israelites said, uh, Moses, uh, ask God to give us some rules. We need some rules to live by. You know, uh, when the cloud moved, when the fire moved, they were supposed to move, but that went good enough. Give us some rules. We'll keep them. Yeah, right. Give us some rules. We'll keep them. Isaiah 14 and verse 14. Lucifer, Satan, Beelzebub, whatever your name you want to call it, said this. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. There's a bunch of folks that they want to grow up to be this, that, and the other. Uh, of course, Tuesday, I was able to share with the folks there, because the students at school, what I had aspired to be in life. And 67% of them have come right, and the other 33 and a third percent. It ain't, ain't never going to happen. But anyway, Lord's blessed me. Two, two out of three. Third and it ain't never going to happen. But one goal that we allow our children to have, I want to be self-sufficient. Problem with that is this, self. They ought to be seeing us, teaching them this, we're going to lean on God. Troubles come, what we're going to do? We're going to be leaning on God. Good times come, what we're going to do? We're going to be leaning on God. Because sin, one writer says this, you see, you were in Adam. Adam was the federal head of the human race. And when Adam sinned, we sinned. You say, wait a minute. It doesn't make any difference. I, I didn't vote for my parents. I have brown eyes. Because my daddy has brown eyes, I suppose. I have his facial characteristics. Because he has them. My Uncle Willard used to tell me, he said, I, I got a picture I, I'm going to give you of your daddy. And you look just like him in that picture. And so he gave it. One day he gave it to me. I looked at it and I said, Uncle Willard was right. He's right. We didn't get to vote on who our mom and daddy was, though. But So we inherit some physical characteristics, but because we're all in Adam, we inherit a sinful nature. Where's that sinful nature going to carry us? Romans 6.23 says, The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. Through Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 15, 22 says this in so many words. In all, in Adam, all die. 1 Corinthians 15, 22. In Adam, all die. In and of ourself, our righteousness is a fifty rag. 1 Corinthians 15, 22, for, in, for as in Adam all die, it, that, ain't the whole, that ain't the whole verse. That ain't the whole story. Even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Let's go back to the very beginning. Close to it. 
Genesis 2, 17. Mine's got kind of a crease there for some reason or another. So God created Adam, Adam, created man in his own image. Told him what all he could do. And then down in Genesis 2, 17, he told him this. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. What did that serpent tell thee? You ain't going to die. You ain't going to die. You ain't going to die. So she ate, gave to Adam. Spiritually, they died. That day, later on, physical death. I'm thankful today that 1 John 5 and verse 12 says, He that has the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son hath not life. There is a way to be free from sin. I didn't say sinless. There is a way to be free from sin. If you look back with me to Romans 5 and verse 12. So we've been talking about Adam a lot. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin, before sin entered, there was no death. And so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Look down to verse 20. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. Mercy, grace. Mercy is God not given to us what we deserve. What's grace? Grace is God given to us what we don't deserve. He's got a never-ending supply of it. Those of you that were around in the 70s remember when uh, they came up with the word, uh, the substance, crazy glue, super glue, however you want to call it. You remember the commercials back then? If you don't remember the commercials, maybe somebody show, show them to you on YouTube. There was a tractor suspended by just a little dot of crazy glue. Lifted up with a crane there, there at home, just swinging. There was a guy that put a uh, hard hat on, had a strap on, and he had a little piece of wood on top of that hard hat, and they put a little dot of crazy glue, super glue, whatever you want to call it, on there, and same crane that lifted up the tractor, lifted him up, and he's just, of course, he, he's holding on a little bit because otherwise he'd hung himself. And I also know of a guy that uh, some guy said uh, to him, oh, that stuff don't work. That's just, uh, that's just TV. It's just a gimmick. Hold out your hand. Put a little dot between these two fingers, you know, and after that he was pointing this way. Took a while to get them two fingers separated. What does that mean for us? All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But the Bible says this if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Around that verse, 1 John 1 and 9, it says this, if we say that we have no sin, we make him a liar and the truth's not in us. Read this story this week. Out on the battlefield, a young man was mortally wounded and the chaplain of the unit came and sat down beside that boy and cradled his head in his lap and 
trying to give some comfort to the young man. And the boy looked up at the cha chaplain and said, am I going to live? You know, if the chaplain was named Mosley, he'd have probably said this. It's nice weather out here, isn't it? I'm trying to change the subject. So he tried to change the subject to not talk about whether or not this young man was going to die. And after a few minutes, the uh, same question came back. Chaplain, am I going to live? Am I going to live? The chaplain said, uh, son, are you a Christian? And behind a weak smile, he said, sir, the happiest day in my life was when I was in church back in North Carolina. I walked down the aisle of the, aisle of the church, gave my hand to the pastor, gave my heart to Jesus. Yes, sir, I'm a Christian. And the chaplain looked back at him and said, son, you're going to live. We're going to live eternally in one of two places. Where's our sin at today? Have we trusted in Jesus Christ as our Savior? If so, it was nailed to that cross. If not, that sin's still on us. Acts 16.31, the Philippian jailer came in called for a light, came in trembling to Paul and Silas. Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Matthew one twenty one. The angel came and appeared and said, you're going to call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. Carville Horton once wrote, Many times I get discouraged, wondering what I can do. Troubles seem to pile up on me with no answer in view. Then a voice within me whispers, There is one who still cares. Go on your knees and call on Jesus. He will answer your prayer. I don't want to live no more without Jesus. What about you? I didn't hold so long, but I just threw that in at the end. What about you? I don't want to live. That ain't good grammar. I don't want to live no more about Jesus. I've got two negatives in there, but pretty good theology. All is sin and come short of the glory of God. But God committed his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. And that thou, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And just a reminder, where sin abounded, Grace did much more about. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, I, I thank you for your many blessings. Thank you for allowing us to be gathered as we are today. And Lord, uh, I just ask you, Lord, uh, to have your will, have your way in each one of our lives. And certainly if there's any that's lost, undone without you, save them today. Lord, we all come short. The only way we can come, become righteous is to have your son Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Help us to get self out of the way and let go and let you. And we, your children, may we continually be about your business. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.